know I'm back at it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we still, we won't let up. We won't let up. We still going to talk about how Jesus did not die for your sins. Ezekiel 33 and 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way. That wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. The wicked man is going to die in his iniquity. Now that is seen in Genesis. That is seen in Revelation. All through the Bible, God is going to render unto every man according to his works. Now I want to deal with the fact that men are going to die in their own sins. Let's go to Numbers. Yeah. Numbers 27 and 3. Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sins. In his own sins. Now, this is seen in 2 Chronicles 25 and 4. But he slew not their children, but did as it is written in the law of Moses, where the Lord God commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for for his own sin, everyone is going to die for their own sins. If you're not going to live according to his righteousness, you're going to die in your own sins. Let's get that precept in Second Chronicles 25 and 4. But he slew not their children but did as it is written in the law, in the book of Moses, where the Lord God commanded, saying, The fathers shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own iniquity. Oh, I'm not stopping. Let's go to Jeremiah 31 and 29. In those days... They shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eat of the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Now, you're not going to bring any occasion against the Lord anymore with this proverb. You're not going to be able to say, because of what the fathers have done, the sons are going to suffer. God did away with that. He did away with it. Think about it. When the children of Israel were going into captivity in Babylon, they didn't go because of what their fathers did. They went because they chose not to receive the prophet of that day. Jeremiah was the way, the truth, and the life for Israel. If the children of Israel would have hearkened unto Jeremiah, they never, ever would have went into captivity, but they would have remained in their land. Deuteronomy 24 and 16. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sins. 
You're not escaping that. If you do wickedly, you're going to be consumed. That's God's way. Now, when we study the Bible, we have to keep in mind that this was in effect all throughout the Old Testament. Even Jesus told the Pharisees that they would die in their own sins. I want that scripture because I believe he was talking to Paul. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was talking to Paul. He was talking to your boy, Paul. John 8, 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sin. See, Jesus knew the way. He knew the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is right. It is fair. It is just. Now, the Christians, they are a sad case. Oh, the Christians are in a very, very sad spot. Here they have. They call Jesus the Lord. He was a healer. And today, the church has no miracles, no healings. They have hospitals in the saints' name, but they have no healing power in the church. Nothing. It's sad. How is the leader of the movement a healer, but the student of today has no powers, has no remedies for the sick folk. And if they had the healing power of God, they could bring in the multitudes. But they can't. God is not going to validate that religion. So therefore, it's empty hands on empty heads. No power no virtue at all. Now, I ran across a man's channel. It was given to me through email. And I looked at it. And all I seen was prophecy, 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 prophecy. And so I commented, what you're saying is God has not taken away the gift of prophecy, but he has taken away the gift of healing. Now think about it. Paul said, I came to you not in word only, but in power, in demonstration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, the church ain't supposed to just have lip service. They supposed to have miracles, but something happened. Oh, something happened. The church has no power. And so therefore, I told him, don't the church need miracles in healing desperately? Look at all these sick folk everywhere from the believers to the unbelievers. And you're telling me God took away the gift of healings but he kept prophecy? That don't make no sense. What can you do with prophecy with all these sick folk? Sick folks everywhere. Don't you know that the hospital ministry is growing by the day and the church has no power to say, no miracles. It's so sad. I taunt the church. I taught the church just like Elijah taught the prophets of Baal. Go pray to your God. Maybe he's sleepy and he needs to be awakened. Cry louder. The Christian is supposed to be able to ask 
anything in Jesus' name, and Jesus will do it. Crying louder. Maybe he's on a long journey. Cut yourselves. Maybe then he might listen. And it's the truth. Oh, I have to tell the truth and shame the devil. Going back to Jesus, not dying for your sins. I put up the challenge, a debate or a discussion for a Christian to contact me and we can set up a discussion or a debate peacefully and I'm thick skinned. We can have it your way. We can have it your way. And they are failing to do so. I had one man contact me from New York. He said he wanted to have a debate. Pick a time. He hasn't got back with me yet. And it's been the last two people that have done that. I don't know if they're going through my channel, looking at my content, and then reconsidering. I don't know. But all I can say is, there is not one scripture coming from God Almighty verbatim where he says Jesus will die for your sins. Now, one person says, why does it have to be verbatim? Well, there's no mention of thus saith the Lord in the entire New Testament. So I want something coming from the Old Testament where there's a thus saith the Lord where there is a God hath spoken phrase or the word of the Lord has come to me. None of that is in the New Testament. So I want something from the Old Testament where God is saying Jesus will die for your sins. It's not in there. It is nowhere in there. And it contradicts Everything that the Most High stands for. Who is wise and he shall understand these things, prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors, the sinners, shall fall there in. Let's get Ezekiel 18:20. The soul that sinneth it shall die. That's right. I like that way. The son shall not bear the sins of the father, neither shall the father bear the sins of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Now, what is going on in the New Testament? I feel like Marvin Gaye. What's going on? What's going on, my brothers? Brothers, brothers, brothers. Tell me. What's going on in the New Testament? It seems like a wolf got loose. It seems like there is a wolf in sheep clothing who came on the scene after Jesus departed, after he left, and taught his own gospel. And Paul's gospel is, the son shall bear the iniquity of the father. Paul's gospel is, the son shall pay for the sins of the world. That's his gospel in his own words. He said it, my gospel. Let me get that scripture for you. Paul said, my gospel. Oh, yes, he did. Let's get that. This is going to be Romans 1.9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. That's Paul's gospel. Paul's gospel 
is the son paying for the sins of the father. Romans 2.16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel, that's Paul's gospel. That is his gospel. He said it again, Romans 16.25, now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. According to whose gospel? Paul's gospel. Paul's gospel was the reconciling of the world through the death of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to get that scripture again in Ezekiel 18, 19. Yet say you, why doth not the son bear the iniquity of the father? That's Paul's gospels. That is his gospel and that way is the way of man and a false balance is an abomination to the lord because that way right there is not equal when the son have done that which is lawful and right and have kept all my statutes and have done them he shall surely live that's the way of the lord the soul that sinner it shall die the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed, and keep all my statutes, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. All his transgressions that he have committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he have done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he shall return from his ways? You got to return from that way. You got to return from Paul's way. What is Paul's way? The son shall pay for the sins of the father. That is the way of man. That is the way of Paul. Return from that way and live. Verse 24, but when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he have trespassed, and in his sin that he have sinned, in them shall he die. Now this is proof this is the way of the Lord. Verse 25, yet you say the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way Equal are not your ways unequal. The way of the Lord is for you to repent and turn yourselves. But no, in the New Testament, the way of Paul is Jesus died for your sins. He teaching generational curses. The Christian of today is a robot. The Christian has no free will. According to Paul, the Christian is a sinner because of Adam. He's going to die because of Adam. And according to his gospel, the wicked man is going to live according to Jesus' righteousness. That way, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep drilling it in your thick skull. That way is not equal. That is the way of man. Verse 29, yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, 
Are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. Now, this is why you're not going to find one scripture in the entirety of the Bible where God audibly says verbatim, Christ will die for your sins because God is standing by his own word. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a son that he should repent. Whatever the most high says, he's going to speak and make it good. That's why he rose up a Gentile messenger and restored the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord is repentance. And I'm going to get that scripture later. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves. If you don't change, you're going to die in your sins. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby you have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? Because God is not going to change. He's not going to change. This is way. If you don't change, you're going to die. Verse 32. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. God wants you to live. And the way you live is by repenting. So now let's get that in Matthew 21, 43. And it reads, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, what is that going into, bringing forth the fruits thereof? I'll get it for you. It's going to be in Luke chapter 3, verse 8. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. God wants repentance. And Israel gave birth to Christianity because in Ezekiel 18, 19, we see that they asked for the son to bear the iniquity or the sin of the father. But going back to verse 8, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones. What stone? The stone of Ishmael to raise up children unto Abraham. God wanted repentance. Israel failed to give him repentance. So he rose up another nation that restored the way of the Lord to us and opened up the door of repentance again. You're going to have to repent. That's the real truth. The real truth is repenting, turning from your way. The New Testament is not repentance. The New Testament is accepting the sacrifice of Jesus and being made right. In other words, the son is paying for your sins. That is something God has been against this whole time. Now, I keep bringing out this scripture and I got to constantly keep emphasizing chapter six of Micah, boy. And we want to go to verse 7. 
Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? That's what he was asking. The Pharisees, they got this religion from their ancestors. Their ancestors always wanted the son to pay for the sins of the father. Okay, even when Jesus was supposedly sacrificed, what was they saying before? It is expedient for one man to die for the nation than for the nation to dwindle. They had already had beliefs on the son dying for their nation. Even John the Baptist got caught up in this, and he was a righteous man, but it was just a wave. It was the belief system of that day because John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Did Jesus say, Amen, Amen, brother, that's right? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And when John the Baptist said that, he was a type and shadow of the apostate Paul. That's why John the Baptist had his own ministry and Jesus had his own ministry. When John the Baptist was beheaded, Jesus didn't stop that. He didn't come to his aid, okay? He was a picture of Paul who also was beheaded. John was in prison. Paul was in prison. John was in the relationship ministry. Paul was in the relationship ministry. John was in the wilderness. Paul was in the wilderness. John had a belt. Paul had a belt. John wore camel's hair. Okay? Paul was the wolf in sheep clothing. Okay? John the Baptist was considered the greatest, okay? And who is really the rabbi of the Christian church? Who is really the founder of the Christian church? Paul. There would be no Christianity without Paul, okay? So what does the Lord want? The Lord wants Mercy. That's what he wants. He doesn't desire sacrifice. He wants mercy. I encourage you to repent today. I encourage you to walk out of the witch house. The church is a witch house. I'm telling you the truth. Do your homework. Type in witchcraft. It's going to bring up King Saul of the Old Testament. And the last time witchcraft is mentioned is with the New Testament, King Saul. Saul, King Saul, was killing witches. Then he started believing in witches. Paul started killing Christians and then He became a Christian. The witch was afraid of King Saul. Why? Because King Saul put the witches to death. And the church was afraid of the New Testament, King Saul, because he was putting the Christians to death. Now, we can set up a debate, we can set up a discussion, and we can have a peaceful talk regarding this matter. Could it be that this whole nation of Christianity is walking towards the broad path, the way of destruction? Could it be that this whole time Christianity 
has been a hoax. Could it be that Christianity is nothing but idolatry? Now, I know you're probably thinking, nope, 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 nope. Could it be? Could it? Could it maybe slightly be? I believe it is. I believe it is. All the way up to Malachi. Let's get that. Let's get that in Malachi real quick. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly. See, God is against what you're doing. Shall be stubble. And the day that come up shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Now, why did he say, remember the law of Moses, my servant, right before the book of Matthew? I'm going to take you to what scripture he was speaking of. And then you're going to be able to see it. This is going to be Deuteronomy 24, 16 again. The fathers shall not be put to death for the children. Neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Now, this is exactly what he was saying when he said, remember ye the law of Moses my servant, because in verse 6 it says, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. In other words, the fathers and the sons are going to be joyful that they don't have to pay for one another's sins. That's going to bring the father and the son together because the son is not going to have to pay for the father's sin and the father is not going to have to pay for the son's sins. Now let's get that in Malachi 3, 6, and this will be it. I won't be long today, but I'm taking my time. I've been by myself purposely on these last three classes because I want to give it to you up close and personal that Jesus did not die for your sins. Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord. Who is the Lord? God is the Lord. I change not. God's way has not changed, my brother. God is still requiring repentance. He's not going to allow the son to pay for your sins. He's not going to allow the father to pay for your sins. God wants repentance. He hasn't changed. Now going on, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Let's ask a question. Why are not the sons of Jacob consumed? I'll tell you why. Because God is not going to judge the sons based on their fathers. He's not going to pay the children back for what the fathers did. That's why he said, you sons of Jacob are not consumed because I'm not going to judge y'all based on what y'all fathers did. Verse 7 even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you. So God wants repentance. That's how you're going to return. Even tonight, even today, you can return to the Lord by repenting. So I gave you the truth. God has not changed. The sons of Jacob were not consumed because he didn't judge them. 
based off of what their fathers did because he is merciful. He's merciful. God desires mercy and not sacrifice. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.